one and let's go what's up guys welcome to the fourth update of the tier list we have been doing this for the past hour close to a month today we are going to check out on the new changes that are that came out this week actually talk about them see how they influence the rankings and change the specs on there now there's a few graphs that are quite changed here so bear with me and once again disclaimer nothing i say is going to be a definitive it's a personal opinion it's most likely inaccurate at this current stage because again there's going to be far more tuning than than they are right now so what looks good right right now this moment it might not be good tomorrow so keep this in mind when you're deciding what to play or thinking about it it's kind of like more like a fun adventure than you know as a definitive answer with that in mind let's begin the talks unsure first okay unsure first all right so let's talk about unsure first uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna start with that. The first pick in Unsure is gonna be uh, let me check right now. So Outlaw Rock is the first pick in Unsure right now, mostly because I didn't test fully the changes that came out on Outlaw Rock. Now, granted that last week they were not amazing, the most recent changes on them have increased their overall damage output. Now that being the case for single target and AOE. Uh, I didn't have time to fully test Outlaw, so I'm going to leave that for next week where I have more uh, accurate data or I guess more time to be testing uh, the spec itself. By no means I'm saying Outlaw is bad. I don't, I'm don't. i not saying Outlaw is good either. I'm just saying that I needed more time uh, to test Outlaw right now. And if I were to be measuring them against other classes, I would simply be um, inaccurate. So hence why I would say I'm going to take a few, few more days to keep on trying, keep on testing. After that, I'll come out and uh, tell you guys what, what I think uh, is going to be. But if I got to be honest, Outlaw Rogue is going to be anywhere between okay and good choice. If I got to be honest with you. It's one of those two. I still believe Sub is better. I still believe Asa is better than Outlaw. Um, the issue still persists for them. For example, they are target cap for the majority of the time. And they don't have a strong burst. So if you do play lower level keys, you might not be able to capitalize on the um, front load burst compared to other, other specs by no means you're bad though um, so yeah that's that's about it there's one spec that I'm not sure where I'm gonna place it okay let me tell you which one it is it's BM Hunter and I'm gonna tell you why I think BM Hunter I need more time testing I'm gonna explain why previously I have only tested one build which was the standard mythic plus build on BM Hunter and that one was quite underperforming okay However, there is a new build where you play Dire Beasts and that Basilisk is actually doing shit tons of damage. It's kind of getting close to a raid build. So your single target, target without build was doing quite good and your sustained damage was getting better. Not, not to the extent where it would compete with most other classes, but better than before. During cooldowns, we already knew it's good, but that build had actually a good single target. Utility wise on BM, nothing has changed there. In my opinion, you're still um, relatively okay there. I mean, you're not really strong utility wise, but you're not bad either. Like, you're meh, okay. Uh, durability has improved a lot on BM Hunter, which is, was uh, which was a massive issue back in the day. So, that's already a plus. That's all I could say for now. The damage department is going to be uh, unraveled next week or later this week, too. Okay, so let's go to the need more changes. The specs here didn't really change quite quite much. So I'm going to go with Disc Priest. Disc Priest, in my opinion, is currently the um, the weakest hitter across... Um, it is it is the, the weakest hitter across pretty much all the, all, the, all the healing specialization. Now, why is that, you guys might say? I think it's pretty much due to the output. Current, the current output is unmatched against other hitters. Um, they do need to be tuned a bit higher up for them to compete against them. Damage-wise, they are not bad in, in that sense at all. I do think they are quite competitive there. Are they the best? Most definitely not. But again, more healing buffs in between that would be ideal for them, in my opinion. Uh, in my opinion, yes, healing uh, healing could be an issue, for example, with like heavy movement abilities, or like when you have to move left and right and heal. But I do believe you have a good utility to begin with. Like, again... Double Barrier, PS, for example, um, you know, PI, Mindsuit, Stamina Buff, etc. Like, you have tools to help your team. I wouldn't say you have no utility. Yeah. <clears throat> um, Alright, chat. So, 
Again, Protection Paladin did receive some positive changes this week. Uh, the Word of Glory has been buffed a little bit. I, I, I think it's like around 20% buff on Word of Glory healing, which is actually is going to go from 250% to 300, which is something. Uh, they're going to get genuinely a bit more armor, I believe around 7% more armor, I think. Uh, so they're going to get more tanky, more self-sustained, but do they need more for them to... Uh, actually, more absorb shield from Avengers, Avengers shield also get more absorb, so that's also plus on that one. But I still need, they need way more changes than that to be considered even relatively, you know, close to the rest of the tanks in my opinion. Their damage output is by no means bad, but I think everything else is lacking, especially durability, which is I think the biggest problem for them. Utility part, they never had an issue with that. I think it's just tankiness, they just need to get better. The the nerfs that, that uh, happened to them a few weeks ago was probably the detrimental part of why, in my opinion, they are in the need more changes bracket. Alright, uh, boys, there's um, in the OK list so far, there's one change from last week, okay? Let's begin. First, we're gonna put MM Hunter here. Um, so a lot of people think that the Minion Hunter actually feels quite good for them, etc. Yes, they do good burst damage on demand. Yes, the sustain is also not too bad. Their single target, in my opinion, with the Mythic Plus build is the biggest weakness. Now, with Raid buff, I agree. Well, sorry, with the Raid build, I do agree that they do a lot better than before. Uh, but speaking about purely Mythic Plus, acknowledging you have a Mythic Plus talent build, your single target is an issue, even with cooldowns. Second thing, uh, two target cleave is extremely weak. One of the one of the weakest so far across all the classes, which is always something to think about whenever you are, you know, whenever you are um, thinking about um, Event Hunter. I guess the season three and season four tier set with Dragonflight carried your two targets, but that is no longer the case. In my opinion, your set fits more rating profiles than Mythic Plus profiles. Uh, so yeah, I think okay for now. It's a good statement. I think that's a good placement for them Will they get to be buffed more then I'll put them higher, but again remember the um, The Sentinel hero talents got nerfed again this week. So I would say that is gonna be also influential for them um, <clears throat> What is the next pick you guys think? For the people that guessed it correctly, it is Destrolog Destrolog last week was underperforming, however, after the most recent changes, especially to Reign of Fire uh, and Demon Fire channel, I guess the channel, Demon something called, Demon Fire, Demon channel, I don't even know what it is, but after those changes now, they will do better, especially on like AoE scenario where Reign of Fire actually has an impact. Now, there are several things that I don't like about Destro. First, your ramp up damage is still bad. It takes ages to set up your damage. Yes, your mass AoE is good, especially during cooldowns. Off cooldowns, damage is terrible. It is beyond dog shit. I'm sorry, Lux, but it is the, the truth, you know? Second thing is I don't like their playstyle. I like the old tier set better than the new tier set. Maybe I'm biased, but perhaps a further change in that one is gonna be better. I see some people pay, play Hell Color, they're casting Seed, uh, maintaining that corruption shit. It's awkward, it's cringe. I don't know if they still play that. Um, so yeah, I, I, I don't like that play, play style either. In terms of performance, as I said, there are far better choices than Destro, but they will do better than last week, especially given the fact that they just got buffed. What would it take for them to climb higher? More changes, more buffs, and that's pretty much it. Okay. Um, oh, shit. I forgot to mention a hitter. Wait. No. Sorry. There is no hitters here. My bad. Um, one, two. Okay, so there, there are three more specs. There are three more specs here. They didn't change this last week. First in line is going to be Shadow Priest and Windwalker Monk. So those two guys are going to be here first in line. I'm going to begin with a Monk first because that's going to be probably the biggest surprise out of for the people. Why is Monk now in OK tier? 
why were they not in a good choice? So, previously speaking, um, Monk did receive some nerfs, I believe, a few weeks ago, where they got decimated by 6.5% overall performance nerf. They will do better in raiding than they are in Mythic Plus, but given the fact that your burst oriented damage profile is still there, your sustained damage is quite low. Compared to most of the specs, quite low sustained damage, which is an issue for them. Now, in terms of utility, nothing changed there. You're still pretty strong. You have a good, you have a Ring of Peace, for example, AoE Stun, Poison Dispel, Disease Dispel, Tiger's Lust, uh, you know, what else? Paralysis, you know, you can, uh, you can interact with Paralysis too. You have like a bunch of shit to help your uh, tank or in general party, parties, party, um, you know, to like get over specific encounters. I don't know why they nerfed Windwalker, I'm gonna be honest with you. I do believe it might have been something to do with like their raid testing. Maybe they thought they do better in raid and they should be put more in line. But for Mythic Plus, honestly, they were never imp impressive, you know. So yeah, but I must say the rework on Windwalker left me to believe that they are one of the most fun specs to play Mythic Plus, especially from a melee point of view. Next in line is gonna be Shadow Priest. Shadow Priest didn't get a singular change for the past three weeks. Nothing. They didn't get one single thing. The only thing that they got, I believe, two weeks ago was like the Entropic Rift nerf by 25%. Um, you know, so that's the only thing they got. How does it play and how does it compare to the rest of the specs? So, Shadow Priest, in my opinion, if I consider the God Comp, do you guys know what is a God Comp or should I should I uh, phrase it out? Because if you don't know, I'm going to explain. Anybody know what's a god comp? Okay, so a god comp means augmentation, mage, combo. That is the god comp, Exodia. Mage evoker combo. If you put them in a mage evoker combo, Shadow Priest rankings will definitely go from, from okay to minimum good choice. Minimum. So this is one of the specs where as a stand standalone itself, on its own, it's gonna be an okay, but the moment you put it in a god com, aka Exodia, it's gonna jump rankings like crazy. Like, it's gonna be either here or here. Their damage profile is the only thing that drags them down. I do think it's quite mediocre right now. If they were to, if, if they were to get further buffs, then I wouldn't be surprised if I see Shadow Priest again on the top of the bracket. Might not be the best of the, sp of the, of the specs so far, but if there were to be any recent, any future buffs, then I wouldn't be surprised if that's going to be one of the one of the hidden gems. Don't sleep on it. Next line is going to be uh, balance read. Now a lot of people, a lot of people are crying about it that Boomy is dog shit. Boomy is doing zero damage. Yada yada yada. I've heard it all chat. Okay, let me tell you something. Okay, let me tell you something. While Boomy could perform quite poorly on a lower level keys, yes, because they have a they have a ramp up damage, yes, mobs die too quick, you can't do enough damage. On the higher level keys, where the mobs actually have a chance to, you know, uh where the mobs actually have a chance to endure your full damage, you are gonna climb the ladder like crazy. Like your damage is gonna be way better, you know, like way better. Again. Boomy can also be part of the god comp here, so technically they can climb also much higher than they are right now. And if Guardian and if Guardian or Restful Druid are not considered to be meta, Mark of the Wild becomes valuable asset to your team. Maybe there could be a possibility for them to sneak you in. Again, I'm not claiming you're gonna be really good, I'm not saying that, I'm just saying that you might be bad from the lower level keys, but the higher you go, the better you're gonna become, so I genuinely believe that you'll be... At minimum, okay. Or a good choice, depending on the key level. Anyway, chat, that's gonna be that's gonna be a conclusion for the Ramos OK tier. I don't think there's anything else here to be put, so let's move forward. Good choice. Now the specs put in a good choice is gonna be they're gonna be one tier higher than OK. And genuinely from here onwards, you can consider them to be played more often than those guys here so healers first p evoker is gonna be here all together with uh, holy priest 
I'm gonna begin with P-Voker. P-Voker output wise is quite solid. I think they, they do great damage uh, and healing too, right? So spot heals, um, stack heal is also very good. They probably could occur with their range, which is quite uh, one, one of the lowest right now across all specs and classes. I guess Devastation Evoker could be lower, Augmentation to some, to some extent too. Spread healing can also be an issue if your targets are not within your, uh, within uh, like a close radiance in, be in between each other. You might have an issue healing them. Also the fact that Augmentation is so strong, it makes your unique toolkit not so unique anymore. So the probability of you begin getting picked up across all can also be uh, a detrimental part of why you're not going to be as popular. But overall you're going to be a safe choice. I do believe you're going to be good everywhere regardless of the comp you're playing or the level of the keys. I don't think you are necessarily a bad spot right now. Same thing could be said about Holy Priest, one of the most welcoming priests, uh, one of the most welcoming hitters so far. A quite good reactive hitter which means you can heal any mistakes from your team quite easily output wise especially damage it's fantastic i don't think there's any issues there supplemented by a good utility on your behalf uh, obviously externals like pi gs for example um can also be quite beneficial to your team um the biggest is disadvantage of having a holy priest honestly lack of control like especially given how heavy caster uh, oriented dungeons they are you don't have anything to help your team. Chastis and fear are the only thing that comes to mind. You're also one of the only hitters combined with the Disc Priest that you don't have interrupt, which is going to hurt you in the long run. And I hope that they will give you an interrupt at some point throughout um, the War Within. If not the War Within, then we're hoping for next exp expansion. I'm really, I'm really sad to say that. Other than that, I don't think there's going to be anything else I can say bad about them. I guess both output is great, you know, defensive and offensive. I guess uh, defensive cooldown, like personal defenses are not the biggest here. They are rather on the weaker side, but everything else is top. I mean, I can't complain about it, you know. Um, there are two tanks that I've placed in a good choice. I'm going to put both tanks here. Vengeance and Protection, um, protection Warrior. I guess I can speak about Vengeance first. Why do I think Vengeance is going to be a good choice, which which means like solid. Honestly, yes, the nerfs to Vengeance were quite big a few weeks ago, most definitely. Yes, the utility also got nerfed quite a lot coming from the Dragonflight to the War Within. Um, but the overall toolkit itself will remain still strong. Obviously, you have the one of the most if not the highest amount of stops per uh, per team, like AoE Fear, AoE Silence, Mass Grip, etc. AoE Stun as well, so which is all four unique stops that you can prevent a cast from going through. Also considering that if caster meta were to persist that strong, because currently casters do way better um, than, um, than, for example, melee DPSs, then there's bigger incentive of playing actually Vengeance DH here. Now, durability-wise, could be a problematic sometimes, especially given the fact that they nerfed that part on you. You're still going to be okay in that department. I think the only thing I could improve here is, if if not damage, then at least more durability, you know. And next one is going to be Protection Warrior. Why do I think Protection Warrior deserves to be a good choice? Honestly, defensive-wise, you're quite solid there. I do believe... Uh, th there's going to be no issues you tank in any physical damage. Magical damage could also be a problem if you cannot, um, you know, if you can't really spell or affect anything, right? So that could be an issue. So bleeds, for example, could be an issue. Heavy magical trout damage all the time could be an issue as well. But overall, you are going to be a solid choice across um, different team comps, although you prefer physical damage oriented comps than magical com comps just because of your battle shout. Utility wise, you are one of the weaker side to be honest with you. Uh, you're probably the poorest utility across all tanks so far, which can be or is rather pro problematic right now. Uh, honestly, not quite impressed there. I was expecting uh, some massive, um, you know, like redesigning on that part. But again, if you if you consider if you consider that you can spell effect to gain time for your team, then I guess it is a massive thing. But Overall, this could have been done a lot better than, than they are.
Honestly, I don't see how they can climb higher than that. I mean, if they buff them more, you know, if they buff them more in terms of like damage, maybe. But I would say like, you know, right now, good choice is okay for you. You know, it's it's better than them being bad. That's what I can say about him. Havoc was promoted from underperforming to a good choice following the 13% out of buff that they received. Except on a hero talents, they didn't get anything. Anything else besides hero talents got buffed. Uh, by 13%, I believe. 13? I can double check for you. I'm 99.9% .9 sure it was 13%. Which makes me believe, after following research and some testing done, they are now better than they are before. Now, people gonna ask about, hey, what about, you know, Fail, fail scared against Aldraki. Aldraki is probably going to be still the play for them. Now, I've seen some sims going around with DH being the highest simming single targets pick in rate and gear. I'm talking about like 640-ish kind of gear. Maybe in the future could be the case. I'm talking about like a present time when you start with like, you know, big love from the mage discord. Not, not so, We're not so great year. I think a good choice for you would be a solid because think about it. You have pretty much, you had anything, you had anything else besides damage. Like you had like decent defensives. You had good utility, good self-sustain, immunity. The only thing that you needed is more damage. After the most recent buffs, now you have more damage, more sustain, better burst, better single target, more AoE, good proud damage too. A good choice would be good for you. You know, instead of being down here in a, in a mud, you're now up there, more towards the middle. A good thing for you. Now, what would they do to make Havoc even better? More damage buffs, a reward on hero talents, perhaps. What else? That's it. Some people are saying more defensiveness. I mean, I wouldn't say no to that. But I think the most important thing would be just... Yeah. Alright. <clears throat> Next in line is gonna be Death Evoker. Death Evoker didn't receive anything uh, massive so far. In my opinion, this could have gone both ways. I do like the current performance of uh, Death Evokers. Hence why I do believe that... There's still gonna be a great choice, although argumentation is so much stronger, hence why I think you'll be quite unpopular. Now, burst-wise, can't complain, good sustain, good burst, utility-wise, unmatched, one of the best in the game, in my opinion. Solid defensiveness, damage output obviously not on the top of the bracket, but it's quite competitive. I do believe death is gonna be one of the hidden choices where, you know, a lot of, a lot of people actually are gonna sleep on this pick because they have no idea that it's actually good but yeah i think given the fact how strong oak is this is gonna hurt devastation and preservation a big time now there's actually gonna be uh, a place and time where perhaps oak evokers can switch to death evokers in some cases you know um so yeah i think it's still gonna be a sort of choice all right next in line demonology lock Honestly, after reevaluating the monology lock, I quite honestly believe they are not up to par with the impressive tier so far um, compared to other classes. I think the damage output here would be lacking to be put in an impressive tier. You are quite balanced among everything, honestly. Um, like decent single target, decent AoE, nothing, nothing too impressive, good burst. Overall, you are solid, but I wouldn't say anything, anything among, you know, anything among okay, like good choice, you know. You're better than okay, slightly, slightly worse than impressive, so a good choice here would be a compliment so far. So yeah, I like where you're going, I like where, where you currently are, probably for the buffs here would be needed to get higher. Utility-wise hasn't changed since the start of the season. Defensive is pretty much the same, and what 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 else? That's it. You know, defense is the same. They're pretty strong. Utility is pretty strong too. So, more buffs, higher, less no buffs than yeah the way you are right now. Who the fuck plays demo? A lot of people. A lot of people. I mean, given the fact how strong affliction is, um, yeah, given the fact how strong affliction is, you might want to see them, um, 
you know, shine over Destro and Demo, hence why you might not see as many D Demos and Destros. Next in line, in my opinion, is gonna get down to Arcane Mage. Now, hold on! Before you lose your mind, let me explain. Let me explain why do I think Arcane is here. Hold the fuck your horses, okay? Hold on. Hear me out. So, why do I think Arcane is here? So, if I were to consider Arcane in a god comp with Evoker, with, you know, other casters, etc., then your performance will not be here. It's probably going to be an impressive. We already know that. But if I, if I am to consider you as a casual player playing Arcane Mage in a casual keys, a good choice is a compliment because you're going to get gaped by pretty much half of these classes. I guarantee you that. After the most recent changes to you, you are in a good choice. Top of the bracket of a good choice, you know. Um, <clears throat> now, I agree. I agree. You were better several weeks ago. One of the best, but quite, quite honestly, not the case right now. So, a good choice here would be a, a in my opinion, a compliment, you know. So, yeah, I mean, again, I agree Arcane does still good damage, has good burst damage on demand, less sustained than before, quite less, decent ST as well, utility-wise unmatched, nobody can complain that, defensive very good too. I think the only thing here would be, you know, uh, just output, honestly. Like, output of Koran is quite weak, hence why a lot of classes can catch up with you. So don't get mad about it, I do believe Arcane goes here. That's it. So I'm gonna say, you guys can hear flame me. You can, guys can say I'm fucking the Lulu. Yeah. Brewmaster, in my opinion, is top three tank currently. Quite strong right now. Defensive wise, they got weaker last week. Small nerf, but overall DPS has been incredible. Good utility, massive improvements, better self-sustain. You can't really go with with. You can't really go wrong with playing Brewmaster now. You cannot handle the same big pulls as you use, as for example, you know, Blood Decay or Guardian Druid, but genuinely speaking, you are doing way, way better than you know Dragonflight. So big kudos to whoever designs Brewmaster. It definitely plays better. The button bloat is also gone right now. Yes, you do better with a full caster comp. Yes, I know sorry, full melee comp. I know that melees right now are not the best, but you are still doing amazing. Um, and in regards of hitters, uh, there's only one hitter that I've put here. That's going to be uh, Monk right now. Monk, in my opinion, has gone above and beyond in terms of performance currently. Yes, they do still have some issues, but overall, one of the most welcoming hitter that can be played between pretty much any comps so, so far. Although you prefer melee comp because of your mystic touch. Unless you have already Monk, then they don't care about it. A solid choice across OK levels. Quite fun to play too. He can play also a Fist Weaver if you want to. Good mob control, good damage, nice spot healing, good overall healing itself. So, yes, the Cocoon nerf has been uh, has been quite big, especially for tanks. They're still going to be good for like DPS or hitters. Uh, so, yeah. I like the Monk. It, play, it, it plays pretty good. It's quite fun to play too. So, it's quite impressive, I would say, tier-wise. So, that, that's about tanks and hitters on this tier. There is nothing good. I mean, there is nothing more to add. That's it. Chat, you ready for the cope? In my opinion, it goes to Unholy. Honestly, bro, I'm sorry. Unholy got the fucking hammer. 10% out of nerf to Unholy. And also, the hero talents also got nerfed. Yes, you still have an impressive AoE damage profile burst orientated. Like, for example, the first initial pulls is they do crazy numbers. But after that, you can most definitely feel the nerf. You're still blasting undeniably good single target as well. But again, I don't think you are in a best candidates anymore. You're not anymore. You are still here. Um, 
I could say that you, you're probably gonna be better for raiding than you are in Mythic Plus, especially with like a full raid talent. But if I'm considering Mythic Plus only, I think impressive tier, which probably means around A tier, I would say, it's a good choice. Like, you cannot be unhappy with being impressive. Like, imagine being mad at being put in, at, 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 at the impressive tier, you know? You cannot be mad about it, bro. Consider yourself an average, casual, unholy DK enjoyer that joins an average key and your tank is not an MDI winner. He doesn't, he doesn't do five pulls, five uh, uh, packs of mobs at the same time, you know, with all the fucking buffs in the world. And, you know, consider that. Would you still call Unholy DK insane after that? Because it might be insane if you actually try to, you know, perhaps do that kind of pose. But if you are thinking about straight in your head, how many, how many times do you see Puck players playing five or four packs in a row together? Hardly ever. Hardly ever. Come on, guys. Be real about it. I'm just trying to put the perspective of the casual player in front of your eyes. Think about that when you think about, you know, Unholy. Anyway, TLDR, still great. Good damage, good burst. Not as good as last week. That's it. A retribution power then. Going next in line dude retribution powering deserves recognition and i'm gonna give it to them honestly one of the most fun spec to play in mythic plus right now um one of the shortest offensive cooldowns 30 seconds in a minute quite strong defensively decent single target good burst damage good sustained damage Good utility, one of the best in the game in my opinion as a, as a melee DPS compared to most of the melees. You can't really complain being a retribution power then. You are, you are doing good, you know. You are doing good. Um, yeah, that's about it, you know. Don't think anything has changed for you. Why is, why is um, red jumping a tier? A lot of specs are getting... A lot of specs got moved down because of the nerfs, so if several specs get to be nerfed, then some of the specs that are below them is gonna go higher naturally, you know? If that makes sense. Let's say, if there are 15 specs, if the first 5 gets to be nerfed, then the 6, 7, and 8 are gonna go slightly higher, right? Yeah. I do believe Arcane is better, I, I do believe that um, Retribution is better than Arcane. As a standalone in a full puck, in a full premade, if I consider God Comp, then I would say Arcane could be probably better than that. If I consider that, you know, if I consider the God Comp included, then Arcane becomes better. If I think about full puck scenario, you know, casual players playing Mythic Plus, then I think Retribution will be a better choice than Arcane. I said it. Okay, I said it, chat. All right, uh, boys. Boys, shall we go next? Oh, by the way, before I continue, guys, this is purely my opinion, okay? This is my opinion. Um, you don't like that my opinion? You think I'm cooked? That's fine. There's no problem in that. You know, there's no, there's no bad blood. If you have different opinions, it's completely fine. Just let me know your facts. We can talk about it. You know, all good. Anyway, <clears throat> I am very, very, very happy with Feral Druids. They were previously doing not so great, but after the after the most recent changes, now they are absolutely fucking blasting, bro. They are fucking blasting. Honestly, I can't complain about it. Uh, like damage output on a single target has been improved a lot. AOE got much better. You already got great utility. You already had several set of defense defensiveness. So, if you guys haven't seen Feral Druid playing in Mythic Plus, it is fucking cranking big time. Fucking cranking. <clears throat> That's all I could say. Wait, what the fuck is that? How could you say Fero is impressive? You have two. It's too long, bro. It's too long to read, bro. I, I'm sorry. Two hero talent choices. Ravage is cuffed. RNG proc based. Rampart ferocity. And the other one is hero based on only. Bro, what the fuck is that? Yo. Listen, man, hold on a second. Am I am I reading my PhD thesis here? 
applying to the Harvard University to get inside, uh, you know, uh, the top classes. What's happening here? Hold on. Uh, Fran, you can remove the emote only. Hold on a second. You are started with energy. Actually, you are. I agree with that. You are started sometimes in, in energy. Not all the time, though. But hold on. I can't read it, though. I can't. Hold on. I can't read it. You guys are typing it too fast. Um, one nerve and the spec is dead. It is not fun to play with too much downtime where it was fun to play in Season 2. I mean, I agree to some extent that, yes, the spec has slowed down significantly, but you cannot deny how strong it is right now. I mean, I cannot think about that in the future. If the spec gets to be nerfed, it's gonna go down, of course. But we're talking about like a present time, you know? Like, this is like me saying, if I get to have a wife, I'll have a child. Yeah, obviously, at some point in the future. But in a present time, right now speaking, Pharaoh is fucking slapping front. Remove the emote only. Let them, let them, let them spam it. Let me see what they're gonna spam. Let me see the copy pasta, bro. That's a weak ass copy pasta. Not gonna lie, dude. You could do better. About fire mage. Hold on now. Listen. Let me explain. I have an explanation before you guys start to type question marks i have an explanation i do have an explanation let me cook let me cook i'm gonna tell you let me cook hold on now listen 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 let me tell you if i am to consider a complete god comp for fire mage here i sincerely believe Fire Mage will get to the best candidates. If I consider Augmentation, you know, uh, your Holy Paladin, or for example, Resto Druid, you get your Fire Mage together. Yes, Fire Mage can be insane, but if I'm to consider you as a standalone spec compared to the rest of the specialization on a casual key level, even if not casual, let's say low, mid, and high level keys all together combined, actual average performance put in a line of sheet, I would say that you are probably within an impressive tier, but I don't think you are a best candidate on its own. If I am to consider the augmentation and all the shit that I said 5 minutes ago, then yes, you are gonna climb much higher than you, than you are. But the truth is, you are gonna get gaped by, by half of the specs on an average key level, because the mobs don't live longer than they were. On the, than they are, you know, that's it, like, you have a good front load burst, but not good enough compared to most of the classes, like, at least the classes placed above you, you know, and what else, uh, good defensive, insane utility, and, yeah, that's pretty much it, that's pretty much it, guys, that's pretty much it, I see some people seeing fury, some people saying arms, it's gonna be quite a hefty battle, so I do believe ARMS is gonna be next in line chat. ARMS after the most recent buffs right now has some serious damage to the toolkit. I, I gotta be honest here, this spec itself is gonna be one of the most underestimated specs throughout this week and next week. Uh, purely about damage. We already know utility part is a, you know... Um, we already know that the toolkit part, like utility, is one of the lowest. We already spoke about it. Defensive part, they might not be the strongest, but damage, purely damage numbers right now are across the roof. They're quite good, especially in like multi-target situation. Impressive, if anything else. Um, that's everything I could say about fire, uh, about arms. Looking way better than before. They have climbed few spots from, from last week. You know, so I can't really complain about uh, about arms. Honestly, I, I like them. They're doing quite good. Alright, <clears throat> that's about Arms Warrior. Uh, let's go forward, chat. Next in line. It is gonna be Enhance. Enhance takes the fucking cake, baby. It goes to Impressive. You got nerfed from last week. So naturally, you're gonna take a few spots down. But overall, Enhance is still gonna be quite strong. In either multi-target or single target, you are gonna still do it amazing. Tempest got nerfed, yes. Arc Discharge, yes, got nerfed. But genuinely, you are still gonna be, in my opinion, one of the best melees out there, you know. Um, again, not the best melee, not the worst melee, 
one of the better melees out there. I am quite happy to play enhance myself as an ulti one. So yeah, I'm pretty happy about this one so far. Wait, hold on a second guys. I forgot about rogues. Fuck. Hold on. I forgot about rogues. You guys are right. Shit. One second guys. There was a sub rogue before that. Hold on guys. It's my bad. I completely forgot about rogues. Uh, my apologies guys to the rogue community. I didn't mean to offend you. I forgot about sub rogue. Um, you know. Being before enhanced but. Overall sub rogue got some buffs. They're now going to do better single target, better AoE. They will still want to play the same. Kill talents could be lackluster too. Uh, defensive part, nothing has changed for the past couple of uh, four weeks, I would say. Utility part, nothing has changed as well. So, yeah. Few rankings up. Sub Rogue got better. It's not the best, but got better. You cannot gaslight me to think Rogue is bad. That is not true. Rogue is not bad. Maybe bad to play, maybe bad rotation wise, maybe bad like hero talents, maybe boring, that could be the case, sure, I don't care. But purely numbers wise right now, you can't really you can't really say, hey, you know what? A sub is bad, you know. No fucking shot. <clears throat> Undeniably. Um Alright. And two more specs to play. Next in line is gonna be Azarok. I think again. The performance ac across these classes here, like the next, like the, the, the four of those classes, is very close. This could go either way, like depending on a key, on the pools you play, on the uh, group comps you play, naturally this can go very west or very east, de again, depending on a lot of things. So, okay, key dependent too, group dependent, dungeon dependent too, I do believe they are close in performance. Astrolog specifically, again, gets better on high level keys where mobs actually can live longer so you can endure your, four, your like full duration of damage um, of the dots, sorry, bleeds, etc. You got buffed this week, this week, so naturally you're gonna get a few spots up right now. Um, what else to say? I would say you're probably weaker than all these specs if I consider lower level keys like that probably you know like on lower level keys but i if but if i have to consider for example like high keys included and mid keys i would say like anywhere between this performance wise here would be would be a good choice like like this for example you know again this could go this could go either way sometimes for example again I, i'm saying depending on a key level or the key itself this could go either way like this for example you see but that's why the performance of this could be quite close I do believe rogues are better than enhanced in terms of uh, durability. They are they are tankier than enhanced, hands down they are. Um, but again, enhanced has better, in my opinion, utility than rogue, or I guess also dependent. But I do believe enhanced has better utility than rogue. Again, um, you have a party buff right now, Sky Fury, and also Wind Fury itself. You have a AoE stop, shortest kick in, in a game, poison spell, curse spell. AoE stun, you know, Sundering if you play Sundering too. Uh, we have a bunch of shit to help your team with better defenses than before, although Rogue has better better defenses than you. So yeah, this could go either way, chat. Honestly, this could go either way, but for now speaking, let's leave it like this. In my opinion, I'll probably put it like this if I have to, like this for example. Uh, but for the sake of considering casual keys and not thinking about high keys, then sure, on a casual key level, then this perhaps would be better, you know, or even this, by the way, this could also be the case on like casual key level here. Um, so yeah. Anyway, let's, uh, let's keep on going though. Best candidates, best candidates, AKA the biggest cope, the biggest cope. It's gonna be right here. Uh, let's go with the, with the tanks. Tanks and healers. If you guys haven't seen, speaking about tanks so far, Bloody K, Guardian Druid, it takes the cake. Guardian Druid got some nerfs this week. Less self sustain, less durability, uh, less damage as well. They're still gonna be quite strong tank. One of the best tanks so far. And durable, great damage, good utility, uh, decent self sustain, good mob control. You can't really complain about it. You can do huge pulls with the Guardian effortlessly, and the damage profile is very competitive. 
Blood Decay next one here. You got some damage nerfs this week. Not enough to offset you. You're still going to be one of the best tanks so far. Quite tanky. One of the best damage profiles. Better utility. Good mob control. Um, you, can't really ha you can't really go wrong with playing Blood Decay here. Now, you might not be able to do the same pulls as uh, Guardian Druid here. But overall... Um, Bloody K is still solid across the casual or even mid key levels, even in the high keys, I guess depending on how you pull, but I don't think you can do the same pulls as Guardian here, because this guy is crazy. I've seen some Guardians do some crazy shit like pulling 5 packs at the same time, doing 5 million DPS and not dying, I've seen that shit, so, you know, I'm just gonna say it's crazy good on Guardian. You know. Um, that's about tanks so far, my opinion, top 2 tanks, Bloody K, Guardian so far. Moving next about hitters, Koli Powden, in my opinion, is the best hitter. You got nerfed quite recently, but it's still not enough to offset you uh, anything lower than, in my opinion, S tier probably right now. You are the best candidate so far. One of the best mob controls in the game as a hitter. The, the great damage profile, good healing, off and, off, off and on cooldowns too. Uh, immunity as a hitter, better mobility, nice, you know, uh, external cooldowns for your team. Like Sack, for example, Devotion, Aura, Perma, DR. Uh, what else? Aura, Mastery as well could be a uh, group-wide DR. And the mob control, again, Hodge, Binding Light, for example. Uh, interrupt, all of this can help you uh, keep your team alive when needed. The Restoration, Druid, and Shaman are also next in line. Some people are going to say uh, that I'm coping with saying Druid is good. I'm quite honestly confident that the Restoration Druid is still going to be a top pick for next expansion. Might not be the best, but you are going to be quite competitive. Given the fact that while... Um, so if the, Guardian not, if the Guardian doesn't become meta, then Mark of the Wild will be a massive supplement to the team. So you might want to let in a Resto Druid because of this. But if I don't consider this healing profile of Druid has been improving steadily for the past couple weeks. They've got several buffs. Uh, most notably, the most recent one was the better single target healing, which obviously is a massive thing for them. Damage profile is quite competitive, quite good. Um, utility, one of the best in the game so far across all hitters. Durability got better, not as good as, you know, Paladin, for example. Immunity, but way better than before. What else you can say about Druid? Uh, that's about it. Oh, you can only interrupt if, you, if you're a cat, I guess. That could be problematic. Shaman! Shaman received a complete rework earlier in the beta, ever since then has become a staple, I guess, uh, way, way better than Dragonflight. Party buff, better healing profile, better damage, damage profile, you can now have uh, more passive healing while doing damage too, which is a great thing for you. I guess you can heal more effortlessly compared to before. Uh, the durability got slightly improved. Um, External cooldown is still an issue, except if you count, count Link. Earth and Shield can give us more DR, but it's not like a real, real, you know, external DR, like for example, Paladin's Bark or like, uh, sorry, Paladin's Sack or Druid's Bark, but genuinely has become a uh, quite promising pick. Yeah, there's a lot of, there's a, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of buttons on Shaman that are problematic, but overall, I think you are in a good spot. That's about it. Oh shit! I didn't I didn't rank Fury. My bad. Fury is here. Sorry. I forgot about Fury Warrior. Yeah, Fury goes here. My bad. Fury, the only change to Fury done was the um was the nerf to Odin Fury. The Odin's Fury now has less damage by I think 20 or 30%, which can be impactful by um Avatar also triggers our audience fury, so your front load burst now got weaker. But overall, this shouldn't really contribute much of a loss of DPS. You're still gonna be amazing. Yes, utility is still garbage. Um, but I still think you are gonna be one of the top millis, top contender for a melee spot, especially on like low level, mid level keys where you can get in a pack, burst the whole pack and exit. Then yeah, you're gonna be top down. Avalo goes in the best candidates. Honestly, even though the soul, the soul shard gen has been nerfed, or well, I guess soul shard, uh, the, I forgot the name of the talent, soul harvest, soul sharding, something something with the souls that got like 
as you get less shards, like lesser chance to refund the shard by 5%. So Convict, that's the one. Um, but I do think the, the performance currently of Afilok is quite competitive. The only thing I could talk about bad about Afli is your single target sometimes, especially for like an extended period of like single target fight, could be an issue. Overall, burst twice orientated has been amazing, especially given the fact that you have very nice one minute, one minute burst that you can have for like pretty much every single pack. I'm very happy about this. Um, so yeah, I hope to see a lot more Afli locks and I'm happy that Afli is actually one of the better pickups right now. This guy banned literally said a French slang, not dead, which basically said, hurry up or I will hit you. Oh, okay. Okay, okay, sorry, my bad. Well, uh, that that's what it translated to, to like, Google. Mobility to enough look has been a lot better, by the way. It has been, has been quite good, you know. Especially if you play the Shadow Bolt Volley talent and Shadow Bolt itself. And instant malefic ruptures, you can move left and right while DPSing. Honestly, unless you play Drain Soul. With Drain Soul, you can't do that. But if you are speaking into Shadow Boat, you're gonna do way, way better. You know? Um, yeah. What else, chat? Okay, so next in line is gonna be uh, Survival Hunter. Survival Hunter has become way better. Um, then Dragonflight iteration, honestly, one of the most impressive, I guess, changes done to survival. I'm extremely happy to see them do great damage. I'm extremely happy to see them, you know, topping the meters, uh, quite versatile, good single target, good AoE damage, better defenses, better utility. Uh, overall, they have been a huge improvement compared to like before. Currently, it's still better, obviously, things are due, due to be tuned out, perhaps they'll get more nerfs, but... Quite honestly, I'm very surprised how good they have been performing and I'm happy myself to try them out next year. Sweet, short, straight to the point. There is nothing to complain about. Utility got better on every single hunter spec, by the way. They they now can do uh, binding, binding shot, for example, a scatter shot, uh, separate talents all together, have a single target stun and AoE interrupt, AoE knockup effect, which is kind of AoE stop, you know. The survival nerf was insignificant. It was 5% wildfire bomb nerf and 5%, you know, uh, something else. Explain the defensiveness on survival. Survival defensiveness are... So, in general, hunter defensiveness, they have a double stack of survival the fittest, which is something that um, was their primary defensive last season. They have acceleration. They have a leech if they are playing the leech pet, extra HP if you play the tenacity pet, uh, extra HP on demand if you play again a tenacity pet. You can also have aspect of the turtle, which is kind of your pseudo immunity. And that's everything I could think about survival, or like in general hunters. So to reiterate again, double defensive survival the fittest, extra HP on a pet, uh, on demand HP on a pet, aspect of the aspect of the turtle. And exhilaration as the last one. I guess exhilaration could be just like a self heal. I wouldn't really call it like a, you know, I mean, yeah, like self sustained, more maybe more than defensiveness. And the leech effect, if you wanna go that, then sure. Uh, I, I I don't know. I don't know if, if I can consider. I don't know if I can consider feign dead as a. Uh, I'm not sure if I can, if I, if I consider feign dead as a defensive. You can cancel a lot of casts on you as a feign dead, and you can also clear your poisons and disease effects from the feign dead. So, I guess it's part of defensiveness. Yeah. Yeah, that's about it. <clears throat> that's about it. Alright, so... Top 3 DPS right now, in my opinion. Uh, it's gonna be first, Frost Decay. Now, I must say here is Frost Decay... Uh, sorry, uh, Frost Mage. Frost Mage is top 3. Um, honestly, in terms of pure damage output, you are probably going to be slightly slow, slightly like lower than some of the specs here, for example. You can get destroyed by some of the specs right here, for example. But if I have to consider everything else, including high keys too, and if I need to put you in Exodia comp right now, 
then you are top three for sure. You might not be the highest DPS, but you have everything else to support your team from nice utility, for example, like uh, intellect, uh, mass barrier, several ways to stop casts, etc. To one of the best defenders in the game, you can peel the tank with the mass slows too, better single target, better AoE, um, a lot of personal defenses too. You've gotten a lot better than last week, honestly. And that's primarily due to the buffs that you got, you guys got this week. So I'm very happy that Frost Mage is good because as Eli Shaman, I love to play with with, um, with Frost Mages, just because they have a perma slow which can you know help the tank kite better, which can help my earthquakes do more damage because the tank has slowed out. So yeah, honestly happy about the Frost Mage. Going forward, all right, chat. Let's see if you guys, if you guys can guess who is gonna be next. You guys think Frost Mage? Fr uh, sorry, you guys think Frost DK is next or Ellie? What do you guys think? Who is the next one? Is it Frost DK next? Or is it Ellie that's next? I'm gonna try to be as unbiased as possible. As unbiased as possible on God, I do believe Frost DK gets the next in line. As one of us, the best melee in my opinion, Frost DK, you cannot be unhappy, bro. Frost DK currently has one of the like one of the best DPS profiles in the game, while also being tanky, while also have better utility itself. So quite honestly, it is a great pickup across any kind of key level. It can also group up with anybody right now. My nice week, uh, so I'm really, really, more. really happy to Frost see how, how strong well uh, Frost DK has become. Again. And I'm looking My forward to them not to be nerfed in the upcoming list overlord. No. Um, yeah, that's about it. TLDR Frost DK, good single target, good AoE damage. They got slight nerfs last week, way better than before. Uh, sorry, uh, slightly slightly worse than before. Um, but still one of the best melees, if not the best melee in the shit. Uh, so Ellie currently has one of the highest, if not the highest, single target in a game. AoE damage is quite impressive, very competitive. It could be a lackluster depending on a prox, but overall has been great in terms of consistency. They got better defensive, better utility. They now can do a single target slash funnel damage while doing AoE. Insane prior damage too. And honestly, they're looking better than ever. I don't believe I'm saying this for Ellie, but for the first time in a very long time, Ellie right now is looking to be a top performing specs in Mythic Plus as of now speaking. Now, would that change in the future, future patches? Nobody knows that, but I'm really hoping that it will not and Ellie will be for once and for all good for Mythic Plus so I could enjoy and you guys too can enjoy playing Ellie. Okay. That's about it. And last but not least, I am putting Augmentation Evoker not here. I am putting it right here. Insanely fucking OP. And I'm gonna explain why. The further they nerf tanks, the more they nerf the tanks, the more required augmentation would be. Because they make the tanks live more, they make the healers heal more, they make the DPS more durable and do more damage itself. Augmentation looks to me mandatory in the upcoming Season 1 of Mythic Plus. Anything above mediocre key level to high keys will be who with the evokers because they are exceptionally good not just good they are they are i repeat exceptionally good in the current state of the game i can't talk about mythic plus i talk about currently sorry i can't talk about rating i talk about mythic plus right now um argumentation is the most broken spec on beta as of now speaking would that change in the upcoming upcoming patches i don't know I hope so. I don't want to see augmentation being mandatory because the utility is also insane. They got better defensiveness, or in, in, in general, better in general good good defensiveness. The damage contribution has only rose since Dragonflight. So right now, O and O, one of the best specs in a game currently, if not the best. I guess the only thing I could say about augmentation here would be 
if you don't play if you don't play extremely high keys or high keys or average keys and you play like only low keys you might you might not want to go for augmentation but that's only for the low level keys you know anything other than average or above you're already gonna get you know way better you know so that's about the update chat i hope you appreciated the update i don't know why there's a 5,000 people listening to a bold man yapping on a microphone for two hours but i'm extremely grateful for you guys to show up here and say nice words some people flame others say nice stuff whether you do that i don't care thank you guys for being here and enjoying the content